Stunning kitchen renovations showcase the pinnacle of design, creativity, and practicality, transforming sometimes dark and uninspiring spaces into masterpieces perfect for family gatherings. Today we're touring six remarkable kitchen makeovers from a London townhouse to a southern gem in Nashville that prove why this room is the heart of the home. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. To shop items inspired by this and other Homeworthy episodes, be sure to check out the product links below for amazing furniture, accessories, and more. So from the dining room, that leads us right into the kitchen. Uh, I'll stop here real quick. This is, um, I love oil paintings. The more sort of beat up the frame is, the better in my opinion. So this is from a Dutch artist and I found it on auction. Uh, I use a site called Live Auctioneers. It's the best. You can find great, great deals. Um, I highly recommend it. And then I like it juxtaposed with this uh, Mexican redware pottery that I found. Um, just kind of playing with the spaces and the shapes, I think it keeps things uh, interesting. And it's totally okay that they're from completely different parts of the world and completely different time periods. You know, when you throw them all together, kind of a mix, it, it seems to work. So here's our kitchen. Kitchen was by far the biggest renovation. So it's the only renovation that we did um, after we moved in. So we sort of had to live through it, which I now have total sympathy for my clients because it is so hard to live through a kitchen renovation when you're eating Fruit Loops out of a bowl in the garage for six months. It was horrible, but we got it done. Um, so pretty much the footprint of the kitchen stayed the same. It worked just fine. I did make the island larger. I'm a big fan of styling an island. I don't like to see a completely empty island, so I made it wider so I had space to play with things. So here sits my collection of just sort of randomness. I love having silverware just kind of out in some crock pottery just for the kids to pull. I always have a candle going. I don't think that's recommended in the kitchen because the smells with the cooking, but I love this scent, so I always have it burning. Um, I went with the honed marble. And I did that intentionally because I really like to see it wear and tear. I love the etching of it. So this is a honed. And, you know, certain times of day you can see all the spots and the cup rings and whatnot. But I actually really love that about it. Same as the unlacquered brass. I think the more wear and tear it gets, the better it ends up looking. So we used that. The backsplash I get asked about all the time because I think people think that it's really high maintenance. So it's a stone overgrouted backsplash. And my reasoning first and foremost with this was when you open the front door, you're flooded with this light and the kitchen is the first thing you see. And so I wanted to make sure that the backsplash didn't reflect all that light and kind of blind you. So I really need something that absorbed the light. And this stone does a nice job of that. It, it pulls in the light and it doesn't bounce back at you. Second reason I chose it was, so it, here in La Jolla, the topography is uh, basically uh, rocky cliffs that sit above the ocean. And I wanted this home to have a sense of history and almost like it had been found. And so the idea of using this stone sort of felt like we had uncovered this house and sort of carved the home into it. And so I thought that was a nice tie to the topography outside. So it works great. And the question I get the most is, is it hard to clean? And the answer is no, because I don't cook. And secondly, because when we do cook every once in a while, there's been things splattered on this and this is grout. So you can just take rough sandpaper and actually just sort of sand out any spot that you get there. So it's actually pretty durable, which is great. Um, same with the plaster hood. I did that intentionally so, again, it would absorb the light and not be reflective back at you. So this is just a nice plaster hood that we did. 
The lights are from a company called Jam out of London that specializes in antique reproductions. And you would never know that this isn't 200 years old. The way that they age their metals is so artistic and fabulous. And they are, every, I mean, every detail of this is just perfect. They took, I think, a year to be made, but they were completely worth it once they arrived. I could not love them more. Um, and at night, I am a creature of habit. And at a certain time, I will walk around and dim all the lights. I think they call it like lamp o'clock, which I'm just getting my mood lighting going. And so once the kitchen is cleaned up from dinner, I turn everything down and I leave these glowing and it just looks like soft sort of candlelight. And it's so cozy and magical. I love that. Uh, the glass front cabinets. Um, was another area of debate because people in my family like to just sort of, you know, put things back willy-nilly. And so it took some learning to know that everything has its place, but we're all on the same page now. And I love being able to see our everyday pieces. Um, I just went with all white place settings, so it makes it actually really easy. But everything lives, you know, here fully exposed and stays nice and organized. I've got my copper pots up at the top that my mother made me register for when I got married and I never use, but I love that I have them. They're beautiful up there. And these wicker little drinking glasses that I found in an antique store are just so sweet. They're from the 50s. And anything with rattan or cane or anything natural like that, I just love. So those are fun. So this pass through into the dining room was existing. This was there. And I didn't originally love the idea of it for some reason, um, but it lets in a ton of light to the kitchen, which is super important. And also it's just incredibly convenient. The kids don't have to bring their plates all the way around into the kitchen. They can just plop them up here when they're done. And then I do the dishes or they do the dishes depending on the night. Um, so it's actually really convenient. And I also am a huge fan of a lamp in the kitchen. Everybody needs to do this. When the dishes are done again and you're turning things down, to have a lamp on in the kitchen at night is just inviting and warm. And it just adds a certain you know hominess to a room. I think, too, the way this home is laid out, because you walk in and really the first thing you see is the kitchen, it was important to make it feel more like furniture and living space than it did a kitchen. So the choices like making, a, you know, having a lamp in here, uh, making the island feel like furniture, those were intentional choices to make it feel a little less utilitarian and more inviting. How have I made this place um, mine or ours for our family? Um, I love sort of collecting things. Um, if you look around, you know, I can tell a story about everything. It's sort of come from some part of my life. Um, the sofa that I'm looking at right now was the first piece of furniture my husband and I bought together, you know, 15 years ago. It's been four different colors. We've changed it according to where we were, um, but it sort of traveled with us. Uh, we lived in nine homes since we um, met. And um, so we've just sort of collected like gypsies along the way and changed things and altered things, and, but they've come with us, so they all tell a story. And so there's not one defined style. I honestly, everything is just very collected and sort of thrown together and it all works. I might've had a piece in my living room in my last house, but now it's sitting in my dining room. You know, you just kind of have to, to move things around and, and make them work for where you are. Um, but stylistically, again, I wanted it to be really casual. Nothing is too formal in this house. It's very small. Um, it's really just like sort of one great room. So everything has to sort of serve multiple purposes. And again, I like traditional, but it has to be very approachable and comfortable. And I want there to be sand on the floor and I want there to be a dog on the couch. And I, you know, I want cooking mess in the kitchen and I love all that. So decorating with sort of a lot of stuff uh, kind of lends itself to that sometimes because you know you don't really see the mess. If it was like sleek and modern, I think every little thing out of place would really bother me. Um, but because I've kind of gooped it up and, and layered everything on top of each other, you know, all the extra life mess just kind of blends right in with it and just makes the space even happier. So I am from Southern California, 
but um, I spent a lot of time on the, the East Coast in Manhattan and then Chicago. Um, so I, I think my style is very traditional, but when we moved here, I knew that it needed to be a little bit less formal, super casual, and so I tried to marry those two styles. And also, having five children, it needed to take the wear and tear. So I didn't want anything to be too fussy um, and really use you know, natural materials that age well. In fact, the more they age, the better they sort of get. Um, so I would say it's kind of a hodgepodge between uh, casual and traditional. I like things a little bit quirky, a little bit off, a little bit imperfect. Um, again, I you know go back to to things that really can take a beating. You know, the rugs sort of have wear and tear and holes in them, but I like that. Um, I use a lot of antiques in the house, and that's twofold. That's you know because I love the look of them, but also if they get a little bit dinged up, that's okay. They came that way, so the more the age, they just the better they get. Um, you know, in the mar in the kitchen, I used a honed marble um, intentionally. I wanted to see the etchings of you know, the kids spilling an orange juice. I, I, I like the patina that all of those materials bring. So I really kept that in mind when decorating the house. Um, and also too, I wanted this, the palette that I used to be really just sort of bright and happy. Um, I love you know dark rooms and all of that, but I really with this space needed to keep in mind that it's sunny and hot most of the year. And so I kind of did a base of everything really light and white and then added in colors and, and textures on top of that. Coming off of the living space as an entryway, we go into the kitchen through this big, beautiful arch that was not here. Uh, this was about the depth of the hallway before, and this was a closet door that had uh, just shelves for coats and things like that. And it was just a teeny narrow hall. There was actually a drop ceiling in the hall. It was very, very dark, very strange, and really restricted the flow from kitchen dining to living space. And so when we decided to do the kitchen renovation, this was one of the first things I wanted to do was to open this up to bring the spaces together and create some harmony between kitchen and living space. My favorite part about my home, I think, is the kitchen. Um, we just completed a massive gut renovation of the kitchen. It was a very small, compartmentalized, 90s renovation kitchen, and then a dining room that felt way oversized for the kitchen. And so we opened up the walls, put a steel beam in so we could connect the spaces, expanded the cabinetry, but again, tried to do it in a way that it felt like, obviously this kitchen is new and just was done, but it feels very charming and homey and traditional and feels like it belongs in this home, not like, oh, this was done in 2008. Um, so that is my favorite space. It's the heart of the home. We're always in there cooking as a family. When we entertain, that's where people gravitate towards. It's just a really happy space. I love this tall tower, is what they refer to it in the design world, this countertop cabinet. I feel like it feels like a piece of furniture. Again, this is a 1909 home and we're putting a brand new kitchen in it, so we wanted to bring in elements that made it feel a little bit more cozy and charming, things that maybe could have been here, or at least feel appropriate for the era of the home, and we felt like adding beautiful wood cabinetry, countertop cabinets would be a fun way to do that. And then we did an unlacquered uh, hardware so it would tarnish over time just to give that element of age and hominess. These cabinets, I love them so much because I feel like they look very high end, they're really beautiful, they function beautifully, but they are RTA cabinets, which means ready to assemble. You can only customize them to a point and they come to you in parts and pieces and you build them yourself. However, they are solid wood. They are dovetailed solid wood. They're really, really, really high quality, but you can save dramatically on cost. And when you're doing a massive scale renovation, finding ways to save on cost is very important. So I love these for the fact that they look very high end, but are budget friendly. Some of my favorite features about it are the lighting because 
I designed them. These are lights from a line that I got to design and create um, with Maxim, and I'm very, very proud of them. And a lot of things in the kitchen, I kept these lights in mind because I wanted them to feel at home in the space when it was done. So I'm very proud of those. And the kitchen, other than that, I this is this is my baby. I am not a chef. I am a Trader Joe's heated up in a pan toast <laughs> gal. Um, but my husband is a chef. He is fantastic. He is such a great cook, and having six burners and a wider range was really important to him. And having something really beautiful was important to me. And we found this extremely beautiful functional option from Mill Bay and just love it and it's kind of like the showpiece of the kitchen which is why we made it such a focal point in the space so above the range we have this collection of copper pots so i'm asked all the time how do they function are they do they cook well i don't know <laughs> because they are decorative um i'm sure they function beautifully i got them from etsy they are original copper pots they're very very old but I really just wanted something to be a beautiful kind of piece of art in the kitchen. I'm sure they're functional, but I can't tell you from experience if they, how well they function. Over on this side of the kitchen, it's the sink. Um, a non-negotiable was a large, deep sink for washing dishes, setting platters down if we were to entertain. And I really wanted to do this fluted detail in the front just because it feels very charming, old school European cottage. And so I knew I wanted an apron front with this really beautiful fluted detail. And then something else we added is this heat vent down here. Um, instead of just having your classic heat vent, we went with a really decorative option so it could feel special. And then instead of doing a classic toe kick or place for your feet to go, we did a baseboard to make the cabinetry feel like furniture. Another way to kind of get that old, homey, warm feeling. And then again, unlacquered brass on this bridge faucet. So it's super tarnished. And I absolutely adore the fact that it's tarnished because again, it gives that old, charming, lived in element, which is super important to me in this home. This used to be actually a bumped out window with a ledge and a vertical slider, like small rectangular window. So when we renovated, <laughs> we opened up this huge hole in the wall so we could have these massive French windows. And I went with this petite frame because again, charming, cottagey, old uh, feeling to them. So I just feel like it makes, it's such a statement and it feels so special and then this is what we call our butler's pantry this is where all the snacks and kids plates and tupperwares and things like that live um, as much as i love the idea of having glass front open shelving I, that wasn't reality for a home with two kids but this actually used to act like a hallway that went into the guest room at the front of the house and on this wall was hooks for pots and things like that on this wall was a just a kind of desk top with nothing underneath and then some open open shelves here and then a tall narrow cabinet here it was very very non-practical not functional and getting in and out of the guest room through this way was not a necessity at all. It's not something that it like really elevated the function of our home. So we're, when we renovated, we walled that off so we could create this wall of cabinetry and this really functional butler's pantry, um, which I love. It's our little coffee bar area. One of the lights from my line is in here. Did a fun wallpaper or sweet wallpaper. And then I actually use these cutting boards for serving, prepping, hosting, but they function like art in the meantime. And then it gave us a place to kind of hide our microwave because it kind of hides in the darker lowers. Um, yeah, but this pantry, I'll kind of come out of here, was, this is the second iteration of it. Originally, I went with blue cabinetry and wood planks on the ceiling because I was trying to play off the range and it gave me what I referred to as a 90s goose kitchen vibes. 
and felt very out of place. And so much to my husband's dismay, because we did have to paint these cabinets ourselves, um, we had to paint them a second time. But when you know that it's not right, you fix it. So I'm very happy we did this second attempt because the blue wasn't doing it for us. So this is our refrigerator wall. Uh, this actually, the refrigerator used to sit here in the space and it did come out, you know, as far as a refrigerator would. And this is a standard depth refrigerator, but the reason it can sit so shallow on this wall is because when this room was the prior space, there was this, a spice cabinet here in this wall, just a little door that you could open for spices, but it was very deep. So we gutted that cabinet out and we slid the refrigerator in. So the back half of the refrigerator is tucked inside this wall. So we only have to have this little front part of the refrigerator exposed, which allows us to have a much more functional flow and lock space for it. And then we did the unlocker here again, cute little latch up there and just a little toaster area. And this is our charging drawer. We have all of our electronics that can charge in here to keep them off of the counter. Greatest thing ever. I highly recommend doing that in your homes. It's just a cute little moment that used to be a big refrigerator kind of jetting out. So like that change. This island, I feel like it's a a showstopper. I was inspired by Duval Kitchens. They make a dairy table that's very similar to this and I love it, but it was out of reach financially. It was a pretty penny. Not that it's not worth it, it was just not in our budget. And uh, so we reached out to a local friend, Nate, who is a woodworker, and he created this version for us that we kind of co-worked on together to make it unique enough to where it wasn't a copy, but similar enough in our very specific dimensions, so we would still have ample walkway on either side, and it's a workhorse. Always prepping on it. There's arts and crafts on it, food out for parties, there's storage for cutting boards and dish towels. It's just, it's not only beautiful, it is incredibly functional, and I'm so thankful that we incorporated this piece into the kitchen because of that. So the stone on here is different than the stone on the counters because we knew we'd be doing a lot of prep here and we wanted something a little more durable. So this is actually a granite that kind of looks like a soapstone. And these are marble because I just really, really wanted marble even though they're high maintenance. And I gotta say, no regrets. I mean, even though there does get little dings or little stains, it just really adds to the charm of the natural stone and it doesn't make it less beautiful. It's just unique and special and I have absolutely zero regrets about going with the natural stone on the counters. But it's probably easy to say because I have a space that I can spill lime juice and red wine and it's not a problem, but <laughs> still, no regrets. Welcome to our kitchen, which is such a lovely space in my opinion. We completely redid this. As I mentioned, we redid pretty much everything in the house. The kitchen island used to actually have a cooktop on it. The refrigerator was over here. This was a, where the fridge currently is, was a china cabinet. With this space, I really wanted to see like wood. And so I feel like in our previous homes, we had white kitchens and I love a white kitchen but I wanted to really mix it up and just feel like this house had been here for a very long time. So the whole kitchen started with obviously the cabinetry and me committing to uh, committing to the wood cabinetry. And then we picked all these slabs. It was one of the first slabs that I saw at the marble slab yard. I think that's what they're called. The slab yard. And so I just thought it was like very, it just was loud, but also like refined at the same time, which I think made it really cool. I also decided on this countertop edge just to give like a little bit more detail in the kitchen, which I feel like a lot of kitchens, you're just play it safe. And I kind of wanted to get like a little crazy with the marble edge. When it comes to cooking, entertaining all the things, I am a very good at ordering in. 
I often get asked like, are you worried about your marble like getting damaged like with cooking and parties and kitchens? I do not care. I actually call it party marble because I think that marble in general tells a story with all the veining, but with every, you know, ring mark or stain or anything, it's just kind of like, oh, well, it's okay. Like you have to live in your house. I would rather have marble and live than I just don't want to worry about it and I don't worry about it. Also, we did a honed marble, um, which I think does help cover up a lot of like the stains if you are worried about that. So with this kitchen, I knew that I also, I'd already committed to doing the wood grain or the white oak wood, but I also wanted a lot of like gold and brass. I just think it's very timeless. I saw this stove at the showroom. Um, it's Bertazzoni, it's Italian, it's beautiful. It also works very well. And I just think it elevates the kitchen. And it also ties in with the brass on the stove with all the different, with all the brass hardware. I think it looks really pretty. Something that is very original to the house is the fireplace. This is actually a double-sided fireplace. So our main family room is on the other side. So it still feels like you're connected to like if someone's in there watching a movie or the kids are like reading, but you're also like in the kitchen. And I, I just, I love a fireplace in a kitchen. It makes it feel like a really old house. Welcome to our breakfast nook. This is where we have almost every single meal. What makes this space so special is this table. So again, this was another exquisite piece done by Process Home, and we use it all the time. Whenever we first like found this house, this was a space, this was actually a doorway that went to the outside, and that just didn't like work for us. There's a lot of doors in this house. And if you have little kids, like you really don't want that many doors. It's like more places for them to escape. So we decided to swap the door, change it to a window, and just build in this like grand built-in banquette. And so we can fit so many people around this table. It's fun for game nights. It's fun for casual dinners. Last Thanksgiving, we actually ate in here. We set the table and had friends and family over had it catered and it was truly the most perfect first Thanksgiving in this house because I didn't have to cook and we had the football game on and it just felt like very casual and very fun. Okay, so now we're in the kitchen. This is my favorite spot in the house. I love it very, very much. When we moved in, it was not like this at all. In fact, we added this entire extension on with the glazed roof, with the glass roof. Um, it's quite common to do this in a terraced house. This is called a side return extension. And um, we knew from the very beginning that we wanted to have a full ceiling of glass because typically everyone knows England is very dark and cold. And I think having all of this glass is just the most amazing way to bring the outside in and bring the sun in. We also added this little extension on the end and added a lot of glass everywhere to kind of bring in the light, make it feel connected to the outside. Um, you can tell where the original kitchen was because it's the flat ceiling up here. So this was the original kitchen of the house. It was really cold and really, really dark. It's north facing. It was, it was really damp and actually really unpleasant to be in. So opening everything up to the west kind of brings in all that afternoon sun and it's, it's just a joy. Um, we feel really, really lucky to have this as our kitchen. Um, we're also very keen cooks. So I designed the kitchen to really be a cook's kitchen and really, really work for a family of five and constant entertaining. So this was actually original to, well, not the original to the house, but when we bought the house, this was already here. Um, it was over there where the kitchen was and we decided to keep it just for budgetary reasons. It's on its last legs. I think it's about 20 years old, but still still going and still working, so that's fine. Um, one feature I love and I think is quite unusual, but I just really stick by it, is this massive catering sink that I had made to measure with a big stainless steel backsplash. Um, we have, you know, as I mentioned, three kids, we cook a lot, and I love a double bowl sink. 
I love also not having to worry about anything. So having something like stainless steel where you can drop a glass, it's not gonna break, it's not gonna scratch. It's just the hardest working thing in the house and I love it so, so much. Um, another really hard working thing is this worktop. Everyone thinks it's marble, but it's actually quartzite, which is a natural stone, but much tougher than marble. It doesn't stain, it doesn't scratch, and it's beautiful. It has a lovely leathered finish, and it's another thing that I adore about this house. Um, what else? We've got this amazing island, which looks like it was, like it's old, but we actually had it made. I designed it, and my good friends at Monkey and Bird made it. Um, it is made to fit our pans, our trays, it's just, it's just a joyful piece. So it looks like an old shop counter, but it's just a modern, a modern piece made to look old by, by brilliant artisans who make brilliant furniture. Okay, so we've moved around the world quite a lot, and the things that we take with us are few, but some things that I have taken are my Le Creuset pots, um, which are over here, and I, I knew I wanted them on display. I didn't want to kind of hide them away. So we designed the island to display my collection of Le Creuset's. Um, they are really expensive pots, but I tend to get mine, um, surprise, surprise, on eBay, and they're actually incredibly affordable. So I've just got this massive guy um, last year, and I think he was about 50 pounds. So I just, I tend to troll eBay a lot for um, the flame-colored Le Creuset, and I, I just love the way that they pop in an otherwise quite neutral space. So another thing that I really wanted to incorporate in the kitchen was a place where I could close the doors and keep kind of the hustle, the bustle, the breakfast stuff closed away. Um, we were told many times that we wouldn't be able to fit it into our kitchen, but I insisted that we, that we do, and I, I knew it would work in my head, and it, it just works so well in real life. So this is the pantry. I found these doors on eBay again, and I had the opening made to measure um, to fit the doors. I brought these knobs back from my mother-in-law's house in um, Massachusetts, and we actually have knobs from our parents' houses all over the house, which I, I think is really a lovely touch. Um, I, they were stripped already, but I gave them a whitewash as well, just to like bring all the tones of the wood closer together. And this architrave was actually the original architrave of the window that we removed to connect the kitchen to the library. So this is our pantry. Let's see which state it is in. Okay, it's not so bad. Um, right, so we kind of designed it to fit our life. And I really encourage clients when we're designing things like this in pantries and cupboards that we design it to fit th their life and their needs. So we designed a shelf specifically for mugs it's the exact height you need for a mug, specifically for these ball jars that we brought back from the States, and specifically to kind of stack these Bulmamar jars. So there's no space wasted. And we, it's not, it, it's a big space because we have high ceilings, but it's actually not a massive space. So we really needed to think strategically about storage. So this is where kind of breakfast happens. We've got our toaster, our kettle, our coffee machines. We've got a microwave hidden under here and kind of a lot of junk is under this skirt, which my mother-in-law made for me. Um, and we painted this kind of space, what my husband called a really ugly color, but I actually think having a bright earthy color in an otherwise quite kind of beige kitchen, um, it just brings me a lot of joy and I really like it. And I love the way that this um, cloth that I found at a discount fabric store um, back home really talks to the, um, sorry, the mustard paint color. And um, yeah, I, I love this pantry. I think it's really, really useful and really, really cute. Okay, so another unusual thing that we did in this kitchen is rather than have an integrated refrigerator, which is going to be a bit too expensive, or just have a freestanding one, we decided to box in the fridge. Um, I, I really love it. I think it kind of makes the fridge disappear, but we're not pretending that it's not a fridge. And it was a much less expensive way to kind of semi-conceal a refrigerator. I also really like that the fridge is off to the side and not part of the kind of heart of the kitchen. Um, I always do this in my kitchen designs. I think that refrigerators, we use them a lot less than we think we do. And when we do use them, it's quite quick. So I like to keep them off to the side. And I just love that it's kind of tucked away here so it's not the thing that you're looking at all the time because refrigerators are not as beautiful as joinery or um, millwork or something like that. Um, so then next to the fridge, we've got this wall, which I love very much. I just love this part of the kitchen. We had the idea that we wanted this space, which is entirely new, to feel a bit old and like it belonged to the house. 
So we put this very simple kind of paneling up the wall and then we stopped it here and put these Amazon pegs up and painted it all. We got this idea from a rental we lived in in London and we just thought it was the most like charming wall that you could have. Um, so it looks like it's original, it looks really old, but it's just simple MDF kind of beadboard and, and timber pegs from Amazon. And it just means that we can display different things, we can move this all around. Um, I just really, really like it. It, it makes me feel, um, yeah, like we can kind of have art that's always changing and the kids can put up stuff and move it around. I'm just like, yeah, I, li I like it a lot. Um, another thing over here that I adore is this piece. It's um, an apothecary from Denmark. And um, again, it was from my dad. It is just such a special piece. And actually, believe it or not, every single drawer is full. And I have a weird memory for it. So I sometimes don't get the drawer exactly right, but I know in general where I'm, where I'm looking for something. So we keep everything in here. Everything from the kids' shoes to kind of hot plates to matches to elastic bands to hair ties to batteries everything like the whole kind of detritus of life is stored in this piece so it's just such a useful piece and I, I just think it's stunning I, I love it and um, I will always have it with me it's the thing I would save in a fire if the house got fire I always joke that I would carry it out myself um what else we've got some sweet little um, pictures of us and the kids and friends and my dad back in the day and then we've got this um, cabinet, which again, I just found these doors on eBay. I knew we needed a place to display things like glass, glassware that wouldn't fit on our open, on our open shelving. So I found these doors and we just have this cupboard kind of made to fit them. And it's another thing that looks original to the house, but is completely new. But because we didn't restore the doors, it just has this lovely lived in feel that I really, really like. And that brings us to the dining area, which is right here. Um, we had originally thought, because it's kind of a three meter by three meter extension onto the original kitchen, and that was kind of what was permitted by our, by our municipality, our council, to add on to the kitchen without getting permission. So it's not massive, and so we thought maybe we'll build kind of an L-shaped bench and have it upholstered, and we'll have a kind of an L-shaped banquette. I found this unbelievable wavy bench um, being sold by these sellers called Stowaway London. I loved the wave. I loved how unique it was. So I essentially just bought it um, and we made it work. So we kind of designed the space around the bench. We had the table already. I made sure that they would fit, like physically fit. Um, but otherwise it was just, a f I just fell in love with it and I, I knew we had to have it. Um, this table again, we got it from my dad. It's an antique Danish piece. And we tend to really like these just kind of plastic chairs with a lot of kids and just a lot of hustle and bustle. I love how they kind of disappear. They're a little bit modern, but they're also really classic. Um, so I, I just adore how all of these pieces kind of fit together and also connect us with these massive windows to the garden. Um, and my house plants also, <laughs> so many house plants. I tend to, um, I don't know, they just tend to like find me and they also provide a connection to the garden, especially in the winter when it's really quite dreary in, in England. One of my favorite hobbies, and I could spend a whole Saturday just styling and setting a table, is um, creating a tablescape for any kind of event. And so I have our table here set for brunch and thankfully the peonies that bloom out by the front gate uh, have decided to show off this week and created my centerpiece easy breezy so this is just how we like to do it yes we don't usually i don't like to have a table set all the time i usually we have it set a different way when we're not having a dinner party or a luncheon so this was nice that she had this and this time of year with the peonies blooming was perfect they're, they're absolutely knockout this year and you can see we do love blue and white so as you come into our kitchen the conservatory you're going to see a lot more of our collections that have come over the years yes. and things that we um, have come to love 
This Italian sideboard that we bought from Kim Faison, Caroline Faison, who we mentioned earlier, her daughter sold this to Eric back at the Antiques and Garden Show of Nashville a couple years ago. She was kind enough to personally hand deliver it to our house. But these lovely little Italian porcelain um, tulipiers are something that I love. Some, some beautiful um, blue and white plates that Eric, I think, purchased. Those my, are from Kim, my little too. My little sweet collection of KLM uh, villages, the little houses that are actually liquor bottles for KLM Airlines, but I thought they were cute and just something fun to add to our collection. The lamps are not special. They're new, but they are. <laughs> I use these a lot. I bet you I buy these by the half dozen <laughs> in pairs. Um, but they are a nice small size and they give you a sense, there's a sense of modernity to them because of the, they're how clean they are and because they're metal, but they, they don't take up a lot of space. So I like them and I use them a lot in various spaces. The mirror is spectacular. It's a antique favorite. French. Yeah, it's antique French. I bought this from a dealer in Atlanta and it's got the original glass, which you can see with the mercury, the silvering is, has peeled off, but it has hand carved birds. All this is hand carved. I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. Um, the wall treatment people ask me about a lot on social media. This is actually fabric that we backed with acrylic so that it could be pasted to the wall. So I wanted this whole, I knew when I, when we bought this house, I wanted the kitchen to be beige and cream plaid or check with window treatments. I just, there's a lot of cabinetry in this kitchen and the cabinetry was all pre-existing and we painted it, changed all the hardware and changed some of the molding. We simplified a lot of that heavy carving. It was more French and I wanted it more English. So we changed the crown molding treatments. We took the corbel, I mean, we did a several, several things we took off just to clean it up. And so we added the window treatments and I just wanted it to feel really special it really because it is open to the rest of the house i didn't want it to feel so much like a kitchen like utilitarian i wanted it to be dressy there were things about the kitchen when we bought the house that i didn't care for and the tile backsplash or the countertop oh, here's where she explains why she we, but <laughs> she always apologizes for our backsplash I, I didn't love those things but it seemed really senseless to tear them out and they weren't so offensive that they had to go and Eric always has a saying, if it's ugly, decorate it. He can make <laughs> anything pretty by decorating. And so he really did in this space, bringing the buffalo check fabric throughout and giving us pretty curtains and using the upholstered walls. And I thought, who upholsters walls in a kitchen? You, should, you shouldn't upholster walls in a kitchen. Isn't that going to get stained? But thankfully, it's all in places where it's out of the way of any cooking spills or splatter and dishwashing splatter. Is Everything there is tiled. And so I think it has really showcased what Eric is so good at, which is decorating. And people always tell us when they look at our kitchen, they're like, I never would have thought of putting blue and white lamps on your kitchen counter. But he did. And that is genius so um well i like that we leave them on so they're kind of like a night light at night time so if there's any reason we have to come down in the middle of the night to get a drink of water or we're coming in late from from an event you know there's always a light on um the other thing i would want to mention of the breakfast room before we left I thought we jumped into this kitchen without explaining the, the the centerpiece the real showstopper i think in this room is this antique english lantern and we found this from a dealer in atlanta and she had had it electrified. It's an old gas lantern. And I just, when we, we turned the corner, we were shopping. And I was like, that's the lantern for the breakfast room. So we bought it. And we did also add in this tray, the tray was just drywall. And we added Pecky Cypress, which is a material that I love to use in a lot of my projects. I just love the distressed nature of it. We left it raw. So now it just, it has more character. And then we have, this is an antique, um, you know, pine table. I, I do love pine. So we do have a few antiques in here and I paired it with the white wicker just because I think it's charming, you know, and they're super, these chairs very are actually Southern. very comfortable. Yeah. If you'll follow me, everyone always asks what my favorite room in the house is. And it's probably the smallest room in the house, but I would love to share with you my 
dish room, AKA the party room. And it was the one thing that I wanted when I moved to Boxwood Hill was a great space to store all of my things for hosting fabulous parties. And when ladies come over, they just come in here and ooh and ah and love it. And I did style it after some photographs that I have seen that Bunny Williams has the most fabulous pantry of anybody. And so um, I styled it that way. And I'd love for you to take a look. I wanted a great space to be able to store my linens. So I have my tablecloths hanging. I have storage for napkins and they can stay folded. Um, I have pumpkin soup bowls for the fall party that are here stored behind the curtains. And so silver trays, chafing dishes, all of those things, all of my cookbooks. And then you've got to have extra dish storage for your fall party dishes, your Christmas dishes, candles, uh, you know, the good old fashioned uh, brunch dishes that your mother passes down to you. So it's just my favorite space because it's all right here and it's handy and I'm not having to climb up into an attic to get it out when I want to use it. And Eric came up with a way to incorporate this fabric that's so happy and cute. And once again, we had it acrylic backed and applied it to the walls and to the ceiling and for the skirt um, just to make this a special happy space. So um, when Eric and I were uh, married, it was December 16th, 1995. And Gail Pittman had just come out with a brand new collection called Hallelujah. And um, it was, our first piece was a giant platter, which I've got stashed over here. And someone gave it to us as a wedding gift. And we both fell in love with it. And ever since, we have been collecting it and using it every Christmas. And I look forward to the opportunity to set my table with this. And I still, 28 years later, have not gotten tired of it. And of course, uh, for the fall party, we use Woodland Spode. I try to choose the pieces that have the ducks and the dogs. Those are our, our favorite things. But I also like to have it in here kind of on display. And um, it's just special to be able to collect it. And when I couldn't afford to have enough pieces, Eric has a dear client who was always kind enough to loan me the extra pieces that I need if my party was bigger than what I had um, the dishes to accommodate. So um, a million years ago, Eric, for some reason, Gump's catalog was selling this pattern, which is called Amari Garden. I think this was one of our very first blue and white patterns. So I have the platters here, two of them here. And when we were building this room, I measured each and every one of my platters to see the height of them so that I could be sure that this bookcase would accommodate all the different sizes that I have and give me a place to put them. This beautiful Jaliska bowl that my mother gave us is my favorite salad bowl. And so it's very large and being able to accommodate that is wonderful, but display it where you can see it all the time and it's pretty. And of course, Eric and I have collected the blue and white Jaliska. Uh, what's the name of the pattern? Like Do you remember Garden them? Pavilion, maybe? Garden Pavilion? Anyway, the blue and white Jaliska pattern we have enjoyed and used for years. I love this kitchen. We got lots of compliments on it, but Ruthann does hate the backsplash, which she talked about earlier. But my favorite thing about it is the cross light. Anytime you can get, well, windows on two sides of a kitchen is very rare, honestly. Mm -hmm. And three sides is extremely rare. So we have windows on all three sides of the kitchen. This large one that looks out onto the property, which is beautiful with the tree this time of year, the summertime, um, is magnificent. And then we have, Ruthann loves topiaries and plants and flowers if you haven't picked up on that yet so we always have some semblance of a garden like on this side with the light so this is a little more filtered on this side so there's always some transitioning plant story happening here that i have to try to come in and edit but i've well, sort of given in, up in my defense we are in the middle of shooting eric's second book 
And one of the things that comes along with photographing home after home after home is the need for an entire nursery full of plants and flowers and things to style those homes. And so in an effort to cut down on having to replace them every single time, I try to keep them alive and use them. And yes. so each year the Antique and Garden Show has a vendor that comes and brings the myrtle topiaries and the lavender topiaries and the rosemary. And so I buy them and then use them in photography of his projects. So she it's doing needs, double duty. She just needs a reason to buy. Yes. <laughs> I feel justified. In spending money on plants and flowers. So this is a, this is the kitchen that we've 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 been, it's really works great for parties. Large island. We have four bar stools here, um, so it really works. She uses it a lot for cooking and for entertaining. So it is open to our den, which is I briefly talked about the staircase that used to be here. So as we leave the kitchen, we can walk straight into the den. Welcome to our kitchen. When we first moved in, this actually was a kitchen, um, but then at the end of the kitchen there was um, like an accessible bathroom um, and shower, um, which we didn't need downstairs. Um, and the view from the garden was like blocked off and the, and the garden was actually all concrete um, because they wanted it to be like low maintenance. So we really opened it up, added in these like picture windows, big doors and this is this is where we spend our most of our time because we have like a sofa in here we have yeah this kitchen which i love um and yeah these big windows so it's always bright um so you can see it's rainy obviously because it's london when we bought the house it kind of ended here but the footprint was the same apart from that so we extended out to the side and we decided to expose the steel beams which um, is now very useful for <laughs> hanging bananas and um, drying flowers. Um, and then we get a lot of artwork home from nursery for my daughter and we do a lot of art here. So this is kind of where I display our kind of family photos and art. So I actually love having this like American style fridge freezer because it's like magnet, crazy artwork, heaven. Um, this is the other side of that picture window in our snug and it's unintentionally turned into the perfect play area for my daughter. She loves like having this like this is she always says like this is my area which is really nice. Um, she's as into flowers as me. She picked those yesterday and put them in her science speakers. It's too cute. Um, so we have yeah like her toys um, and we don't interfere with her area and it's actually like worked out perfectly and um, yeah we have a sofa in here the, our kitchen was made by this um, father daughter cabinetry maker duo um, and so we wanted it to be like birch ply so it's birch ply and then the worktops are brass which some people might hate because they do mark but I love that like aging patina so um, when we first got them they were like super shiny and now they're like aging and I feel like every splash is like you know the story of like a drink spilled or you know like with friends or like dinner for my daughter or I don't know I kind of love I love that like aging so yeah we embrace the brass we used um zellage tiles again I did this tiling with my dad um, so excuse any imperfe <laughs> imperfections, but I'm very proud of it. Um, and then we have like bits and bobs we've collected from holidays and this is a junk shop find. These were, we bought in Mexico. Um, these two, they're like Oaxacan and clay. Um, so it's just like, it's made by my daughter. So it's just like special pieces to us. My husband's really into knives. So we have the knives proudly on display. They're mostly from Japan. I'm mostly not allowed to use them. The, the microwave and toaster is like tucked away, spices tucked away. So we really thought about how to like 
what we needed to store, we made like a really big list of what we needed to store in the kitchen and then made sure there'd be a space for everything. Our like worktops are a little bit higher than average because my, my husband's tall and he does most of the cooking, lucky me. Um, and then this is like a, you know, like a Montessori tower, it's my daughter's, so she can get involved with cooking, which she does all the time. We do a lot of baking, so and that's, it's a nice coincidence that it matches the kitchen. Come this way and you'll see um, where we eat all our meals. So this was the area that was a loo and a shower when we first moved in and it was in quite the state of disrepair actually. Uh, the building was kind of falling down and when we went to add windows it did fall down so we had to rebuild it but we used the same footprint um, and I got this. This table was actually as old as the house. I got it in an antiques market and it was made in like the 1890s and so was the house, so I love that. So my dad built me this um, bonquet out of birch ply to match the kitchen, and we had it upholstered in this green denim, um, which I love because it ages really nicely. It's easy to zip off and clean, and it's just like really hard wearing for lots of bums. This actually is maybe one of my favorite features in the house where we've been recording my daughter Remy's height. Um, look how tall she is, my baby. Um, so I like that even though this is like scratched and done in pencil, we're like, it's the story of our family in this, as the current custodians of this home. Um, this artwork is also by Studio Lenka. It's actually um, a commission at the time we were in Mexico and he, so he was like, oh, I'll do an artwork inspired by the Frida Kahlo self-portrait where she's sat on a chair um, with the dog. So that's his interpretation of that, which I love. Um, these, again, are from Antiques Markets. They're a copy, actually, of the Willy Ghoul ones. The real ones are made of asbestos. So um, the one exceptional <laughs> to having a copy is those. Um, and then, yeah, this is really messy, but it's where I'm growing all my seedlings. Um, to be planted out in the garden later and then here's like our big back doors and it's rainy today so it's not very exciting but um, they like you know they're bifold so they open all the way up to the garden but our only compromise was we have cats so there is a cat flap built into the bifolds don't tell anyone thanks for watching be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content shopping guides and so much more